Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the docking procedure. Chris Hadfield is one of the best known astronauts of all time, and he had quite a harrowing story on his first space flight. During this flight, he and his fellow astronauts had the pleasure of somehow navigating a quarter million pound shuttle towards a target on the MER space station that was about the size of a coffee cup. Yeah, the most tense few minutes of their lives, I can imagine. Chris's job was to watch and communicate the speed and range information to the pilot, which is a super important job, obviously, because it's such a precise thing. There's a time window, they have to be traveling at just the right speed, and they need to be accurate. Chris explained, quote, if you hit Mer just a little too soft, then the spring mechanisms would bounce you off. He went on to say, quote, if you hit Mer just a little too hard, then you would break Mer in half and kill the three people on board. So you've got to hit it exactly right. Yeah, definitely high stakes at this point. So when the crew is about 30 feet away, their two sensors start telling them completely different things. One said 32 feet and the other said 20 feet. Chris said, quote, they're either both wrong or one of them is completely wrong. Now, what do you do? There's nobody to ask. If the crew on board the flight deck of the shuttle don't solve this problem in the next 30 seconds, then the whole flight is bust and done. Instead of panicking, however, Chris explained that he just went, quote, back to basics. This insanely intelligent person knew the dimensions of the docking module, so he used his thumb to help him sort of eyeball the distance through a window. I mean, that alone is just wild. Apparently, this helped him to figure out that they were 21 feet away, not 32. He used his stopwatch to figure out the math of how fast they were going and when the thrusters should be fired, and thankfully, he was spot on. Chris finished the story by saying, quote, it wasn't for a few minutes before one of us looked around and said, hey, we did it, we're actually here. That was a big relief of emotion on board. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. In our number nine spot today, we have the gas leak. In July of 1975, the Apollo Soyuz test project took place, which was a historic moment for both space travel as well as just for politics. This was the first joint space flight between the United States and the Soviet Union, and it marked the end of the space race. And while it started off extremely smoothly and was going well, this flight soon became known for an entirely different reason. On return, the two spacecrafts, the American one holding three astronauts and the Soviet one holding two cosmonauts met in orbit around the Earth and docked to each other. Here the group began exchanging information, they were speaking each other's language to make communication easier, and also just as a sign of respect, things were going amazingly considering the recent history. After 44 hours together they parted, and after a few more days they were on their descents back to Earth. During re-entry, however, a malfunction with the reaction control system, which is the system that controls the altitude. this malfunction function ended up causing highly poisonous nitrogen tetroxide to enter the cabin where the American astronauts were. Thankfully, once this spacecraft landed, the cabin becomes ventilated, which gave them time to be rescued without being fatally injured. The astronauts on board were rushed to the hospital and were found to have developed a form of pneumonia that is caused from chemicals, but within weeks they all recovered and lived to tell the tale of this historic space flight. In our number 8 spot today we have MER EO23. This is the name of a mission that was part of the Shuttle Mir space program, which was a quote, collaborative 11 mission space program between Russia and the United States that involved American space shuttles visiting the Russian space station Mir, Russian cosmonauts flying on the shuttle, and an American astronaut flying aboard a Soyuz spacecraft to engage in long duration expeditions aboard Mir. During this mission, on February 23rd, 1997, a backup solid fuel oxygen canister ended up catching fire. This fire was in one module but it quickly began to spew molten metal, and the crew on board was concerned that it could melt through the hull of the space station. Smoke began to fill the station, and the crew were forced to use respirators to continue breathing, but of course, when it rains, it pours, and some of the respirators were faulty and didn't supply oxygen. After burning for 14 minutes and the crew using up three fire extinguishers, the fire was thankfully put out. The smoke, however, remained thick for another 45 minutes. This was probably one of the most terrifying things that the crew went through, but this certainly was not the end of the road of struggles for these guys. Let me know down below in the comments if you want a part two of this video, and maybe we can cover the rest of what went wrong on this mission. In our number seven spot today, we have Apollo 13. Definitely one of the most well-known space missions ever. Apollo 13 is famous.
famous for all of the most terrifying reasons. This mission was the seventh crewed mission in the Apollo space program and it was the third that was meant to land on the moon. The spacecraft launched on April 11, 1970, but the mission to land on the moon was quickly aborted two days into the flight after an oxygen tank in the service module failed. A quote, routine stir of an oxygen tank ignited damaged wire insulation inside it, causing an explosion that vented the contents of both the service module's oxygen tanks to space. Without this oxygen that's needed for breathing and for generating electric power, the service module's propulsion as well as their life support systems were just unable to operate. This meant that the command module systems had to be shut down in order to conserve the resources it had left for re-entry. This meant that the crew had to transfer to the lunar module as a sort of lifeboat. The lunar module was only designed to support two men on the moon's surface for two days, so mission control had to create new procedures so that it could support three men for four days. The crew was in for some of the most difficult times while the ground crew worked to help bring them home alive. Safe to say everyone was as stressed out as they could possibly be. Thankfully, the crew on board the ship were returned to Earth safely, and this story, although horrifying, did wonders to restore public interest in the Apollo program. This story is one of the most famous space stories ever, thanks to the several dramatizations made about it. In our number six spot today, we have the STS-27 disaster. During the launch of STS-27, which took place in 1988, debris from the right solid rocket booster struck the underside of the craft, which ended up severely damaging over 700 tiles on the outside of the craft, as well as taking off one tile completely. It might not seem like a lot, but every little thing matters when you're doing something like going to space. So it's important to note that this mission was classified because of the fact that there was a surveillance satellite being launched along with it. Because of this, things had to be done a little differently. So when the crew on board sent photos of the damage back to the ground, the photos were encrypted and they were extremely low quality. Mission Control deemed the damage to be just light and shadows and told the crew to continue much to their dismay. Once landed, it became clear that Atlantis was the single most damaged shuttle that was thankfully able to successfully land. The survival of the crew came down to basically happenstance, which is just terrifying. This was only the second mission after the disaster of the Challenger, so should this one have gone fatal, we likely wouldn't have seen the continuation of the program. In our number five spot today, we have the organic object. Leland Melvin is an American engineer and retired NASA astronaut who served on board the space shuttle Atlantis as a mission specialist. He is an incredibly brilliant man with an incredible resume, and that is exactly why this story is so unnerving. He claimed that while on a space mission as he was orbiting Earth, which for the record, how cool would it be able to tell a story like that? You're just orbiting Earth. While he was on this mission, he saw a quote, alien-like organic object. NASA disputed his claims and said that what he saw was just ice, but I feel like I trust the person who actually saw it with their own eyes. Leland went on to write that whatever he saw was quote, translucent, curved, organic looking. I have no explanations to offer, but I will say it certainly is interesting and a little bit terrifying. In our number four spot today, we have the space snake. Dr. Franklin Story Musgrave is an American physician and retired NASA astronaut, and considering how credible he tends to be, despite the absurdities of this story, it makes it hard to pass off as a lie so easily. While he was in space, he claims that he saw something that I don't wish upon anyone, a sort of space snake. He said that he saw an eight foot long white snake floating through space. I don't even know what I would do. Probably cry, call Houston, I'm not sure. There are many people who think that this was simply just a detached hose from the spaceship, but Dr. Musgrave remains adamant on what he saw, and to be completely honest, I kind of believe him. Maybe his mind was playing tricks on him, I mean, I don't know what happens in space, but I find it hard to believe that this person, who would likely be familiar with the parts of a spacecraft, mistook a hose for a snake. In our number three spot today, we have the lights. Leroy Chiao was the commander of the ISS in 2005, and this is exactly when this strange sighting occurred. It is said that he wasn't the only one who witnessed this though, as it is said that the entire crew was there to see this unexplainable occurrence along with him. Basically, they saw a strange set of lights while up in space. He went on to describe the lights and said that they were in the formation of an upside down V, and that they ended up stumbling upon this bizarre situation after the formation flew past them. I'm just gonna say it, we're all thinking it, it sounds a lot like aliens. I just don't have any 
many other possible explanations, and you're telling me that the whole crew saw it? I swear, nothing will convince me more of aliens than an astronaut's first-hand account. In our number two spot today, we have Glowing Green. Gordon Cooper is a well-known astronaut after having flown the Mercury 9 and the Gemini 5, and in fact, he was the last American to spend time in space alone. But despite all these exciting accolades, I want to take you to May 15th, 1963. Here, he was sent off to space in a Mercury capsule for a 22 orbit journey around the Earth, and while on this journey, he saw something very unsettling, a glowing green object that would approach his capsule. During his final orbit, Orbit, he did tell the tracking station of this object that was quickly approaching his capsule, and they were able to pick up this UFO on their radar. But once Cooper landed, reporters were told that he was not allowed to answer questions regarding this UFO. It's even more interesting considering how Gordon has been a vocal and firm believer in UFOs. So I ask. What do you guys think it was? In our number one spot today, we have space music. After four days of space travel in 1969, the Apollo 10 astronauts, Tom Stafford, Gene Cernan, and John Young, were on the far side of the moon. We were full of curiosity over what the other side could possibly be containing, but it wasn't necessarily the discovery people were expecting. While the astronauts were taking photographs and experiencing this new to humans area, they began to hear some otherworldly music coming from their headsets, and this continued for one full hour. Gene is said to have exclaimed, boy, that sure is weird music. We're gonna have to find out about that. While John replied, nobody will believe us. For decades, this space music was left a complete mystery until just recently when an explanation was put forward. It is being claimed that perhaps this sound emanated from radio interference between spacecrafts. While this is a fairly reasonable explanation, not everyone is exactly convinced. Number 10, a car crash. Let's start with the drama here. Pretty sure if you say you're an astronaut, people are going to look at you differently in a good way. Man, you've been to space. After all, you are a human being who has seen just how small the world is compared to the wide, wide universe. Many revere James Donald Halsell Jr. after the five space shuttle missions he took before retiring in 2006. But he must have hit the ground hard when he came down to Earth. Halsell was traveling in his car to West Monroe, Louisiana and stopped at a Motel 6. While there, he downed three glasses of wine before heading back on the road, which is a no-no. Therefore, tragedy struck. James crashed into a car killing two of the young passengers in the vehicle who flew from the car when they crashed. He was going extremely fast and reportedly tried to steal a bystander's car when he stopped at the site. James told police that he didn't remember leaving the hotel or how the crash occurred. Though they found no drugs at the scene, police did find 10 empty sleeping pill packages back at the room. NASA declined to comment about the arrest. Very, very sad. Number 9. A love triangle. This one? Oh my god. This next one is pretty rough. We all know what it's like to go through a breakup. It's not fun. It sucks. It doesn't necessarily bring out the best in you. Mother of three and mission flight engineer as well as crew member on the 13 day shuttle mission, Lisa Nowak was a prominent figure in NASA's astronaut team. She was even the inspiration for Natalie Portman in the film Lucy in the Sky before she went all breakup song on her ex. In February 2007, Lisa drove from Houston to Orlando, Florida wearing diapers so she didn't have to stop, to confront the woman who she claimed stole her man. She claimed she was going to have a calm conversation, but instead she ended up attacking her. She was in a wig and a trench coat and there was pepper spray, it was a whole ordeal. William O'Fallon and Nowak trained together and began an affair in 2004. Both divorced their partners with Nowak thinking her future was with William. Wrong. William started exclusively dating Air Force Captain Colleen Shipman and he thought Nowak took it well when he told her. Instead, she ended up sneaking into his apartment, read their email exchanges and well, flash forward to a 900 mile drive, pepper spray and nightmares Shipman will have for the rest of her life. Initially arrested on the attempted murder charges, they were dropped to less aggressive accusations like attempted burglary and kidnapping. Shipman and Bill are now married while Nowak, after years of counseling, is doing much better, though she refuses to talk about the event for obvious reasons. I hope you're doing better. Number eight, married to his work. NASA ended up wanting so little to do with this guy that they actually fired him. Today, divorce is about as common as breakups in high school. Though some happy news, it looks like the percentage is going down. But in the 60s, getting divorced was a major taboo. NASA's astronauts were about the closest thing to comic book heroes the world had ever seen. And they knew that public opinion was a huge part of their funding. So when an astronaut hero misbehaved, 
believed NASA wasn't going to stand for it. Don Esol wasn't exactly a faithful husband and he rarely visited his son who was dying of leukemia. He also cheated on his wife multiple times at Cape Canaveral which was flooded with eager groupies. He gaslighted his wife several times when she asked him to admit it and when she suggested going to therapy if he thought she was crazy he replied but I'll lose my job. Don and Harriet at last divorced and NASA soon followed firing Don as well. Bye Don. <laughs> The Elaner. Number seven, the Astronauts Wives Club. Hoo hoo hoo, not a fun time. Speaking of astronauts behaving badly, let's talk about the reports of the Astronauts Wives Club. These lovely ladies were used to a measly military pay when suddenly they became celebrities overnight. And given the aforementioned squeaky clean image NASA wanted to protect, any scandal was swept under the rug. According to the Astronauts Wives Club, a true story by Lily Copel. On the outside, they were the ideal Stepford wives, apple pie baking, apron wearing beauties. But out of the 30 astronaut marriages from 1961 to 69, only seven would stay married. The biggest wedge in the marriage was the time the men spent at Florida's Cape Canaveral, which I previously mentioned, which became off limits playground. Cape Cookies became the name of the women who would magically appear to have their own rockets launched by the men who would touch the stars. To handle the silence and stress, the wives turned to excessive ways to self medicate the nightly gin and tonic with a tranquilizer garnish. Yeah. Pretty rough. Number six, fireflies. Ice particles, they said. Part of the capsule heat shield, they said. Could it have been that John Glenn saw something else instead? Glenn was the first American astronaut to orbit the planet in 1962. He was also one of the good ones. He and his wife Annie were married for 73 years. In fact, when he left to fight in World War II, he told her, and I quote, I'm just going down to the corner store to get a pack of gum, to which she replied, Don't be long. He said that every time he went away to war. She kept a gum wrapper in her purse every time after that. Anyways, grab a tissue, that's super cute, let's continue. Glenn, while flying over Australia, saw strange floating mass like tiny little stars outside the Friendship 7 capsule. When he tapped on the window, they flew off. Mission Control were at first concerned the anomalies were fragments of the heat shield, but that wasn't the case. No, no, it was something else. NASA has since explained the sighting as ice particles, but up until his death in 2016, Glenn never really believed it. His wife Annie finally joined him at Peace passing away due to COVID complications at the age of 100 in May 2020. Number 5. Space Music According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the first song played in space was Jingle Bells on the 16th of December 1965. It was broadcasted during NASA's Gemini GA space flight. Though there have been several musicians played out there in the big space ever since, there remains an artist unknown. Eugene Cernan in the Apollo 10 space capsule reported hearing a strange kind of music during a mission. What he described was a strange musical whistling sound like how you would imagine space music to be like the I can't do it. Just imagine very sci-fi. He reached out to NASA Mission Control to see if they'd heard it too. According to the mission transcripts released in 2008, the sounds were recorded. Of course, alien theories have spread far and wide, but NASA made no comment. Then in the Apollo 11, Michael Collins recorded hearing the same sound while orbiting the moon. This time NASA was prepared. They said it was, and I quote, interference between the LMs and command modules VHS radios, unquote. Sure it was NASA. Sure it was. Number 4. Bright Lights and Beyond It might surprise you to learn that not only do we have a ton of garbage down here on Earth, but a ton of space junk sits just above us. In fact, the estimate for just how much is staggering. Around 128 million pieces, about 6,000 tons of space debris in space. Earth's low orbit carries millions of rocket and spacecraft fragments along with dead satellites. Each one is flying around 18,000 miles per hour, so faster than a bullet, yeah. So the likelihood of astronauts encountering space debris is pretty high, but this one example is pretty staggering. But that doesn't stop this case from being very strange. Brent Jett was in the STS-115 mission in 2006 on his way to help construct the ISS. But then he noticed, and I quote, some kind of reflective structure, unquote, outside the shuttle. According to him, quote, it doesn't look like anything I've ever seen outside of the shuttle, that's for sure, unquote. NASA took control of the camera and there were three bright objects in the sky. When they ordered an inspection of the craft, they saw nothing. Not even a hint. Space junk? 
or aliens. NASA has no explanation and they won't talk about it, so what is it? And heading on to our top three, number three, the Gordo UFO. I suppose it's not too hard to guess that Major Gordo Cooper was a lover of all things space, but it turns out that his adoration goes deeper than that. In 1957, 30 year old Cooper was test pilot and project manager of the fighter section of the Experimental Flight Test Engineering Division at Edwards AFB in California. Two members of his crew one morning mentioned to him that they caught sight of a strange saucer like object. It apparently didn't make a sound as it landed and took off. The two men took photos of the craft and Cooper was ordered to have the film developed, have no prints made, and send it right away to the Pentagon. He was also instructed not to look, but like of course he did. He saw exactly what the two men described and to his very deathbed insisted the government was covering it up. But not only that, on his 1963 solo trip, he had a close encounter that was broadcasted on NBC. He saw a glowing green object approaching and it was picked up on radar. But when he got to Earth, he wasn't allowed to talk about it. Number two, edits in space. Could NASA be editing the footage sent down from the International Space Station? This theory is hot among conspirators. The idea really started to gain traction in July 2016. Two different cameras, 25 hours apart, spotted a distinct square shape, larger than the Earth. Initially, UFO hunters concluded that it had to be some kind of unidentified object in our orbit, but another theory surfaced that the shapes were actually attempts by NASA to edit something else. Else out. Could it be meteors or a cover up of something NASA has determined we are not ready to see yet? NASA was forced to deny that they didn't attempt a cover up, but UFO hunters will never rest until the truth is revealed, even if it has been already, so we don't really know what's true. And last but not least, the Reich and NASA. Well, this is a surprising little tidbit, but honestly, I'm not too surprised. This is definitely worthy of being number one, especially since NASA doesn't advertise it really at all. During World War II, the US recruited the help of over 1600 German Yahtzee scientists. Yes, I said Yahtzee because apparently YouTube gets scared they are death eaters. Anyways, they hired over 1600 German Yahtzee scientists in institutes like NASA to increase their payroll. The code name for this operation was Operation Paperclip because of all the paperclips on the immigration files, which brought in Werner von Braun and his V2 rocket team. The former SS officer would become a US citizen and was a key architect in the Apollo program. What? In 1977, he was awarded the National Medal of Science despite having previously handpicked slave laborers in Buchenwald for his rocket building efforts. Yeah, so that's special. In our number 10 spot, we have the gray thing. This is a story told by an anonymous online user that claims to be an astronaut who once saw an alien in an underground US base. Take it with a grain of salt, but I wanted to include it because the story was super interesting to read. He claimed to have been traveling through a US base that he didn't want to name as there is only a number of people allowed in and he doesn't want to be tracked. Anyways, at this base, he saw a gray person that was quite definitely not not from this planet. Also when out in space, he had seen a fleet of aircraft that he knew were UFOs, but he didn't think we had any contact with them yet. It wasn't until that moment that he realized that not only do we have contact with them, the aliens are actually already living among us. Interesting. Well, there are so many quote unquote whistleblowers that have mentioned gray people, so the story could be true. What do you think? In our number nine spot, we have the flying saucer. Astronaut Deke Slayton revealed in an interview in 1951 that he had seen UFOs. Technically not in space, but obviously the UFO would have come from space, so I wanted to include this one. He said that he was testing a P-51 fighter and flying at about 10,000 feet in Minneapolis when he spotted something strange in the distance. It was gray and kinda looked like a kite, but a kite wouldn't be flying this high, he thought. As he got closer, he saw that it was like a saucer, a disc. He eventually realized that it was starting to move away from him, and then as quick as a blink, it pulled about a 45 degree climbing turn, and then accelerated and disappeared. You can see why I wanted to include this one. In our number eight spot, we have UFO in orbit. Astronauts James Lavelle and Frank Borman have claimed to have seen a UFO during the second orbit on the Gemini. There have been many skeptics around this claim and they usually say that it was probably the Titan booster rocket that was at its final stage. However, Lavelle has replied to this claim saying that he could also see the booster rocket nearby when he saw the UFO. The exchange initially reported went as follows. Lavelle, Bogey at 10 o'clock high. 
NASA employee. This is Houston, say again, Seven. Lavelle said we have a bogey at 10 o'clock high, NASA employee. Gemini 7, is that the booster or is that an actual sighting? Lavelle, we have several actual sighting. NASA employee, estimated distance or size? Lavelle, we also have the booster in sight. Ooh, well, I don't know how the skeptics got around that, but skeptics are pretty committed to believing their own narrative about life in the universe, so oh well, let's let them stay in their boring world. In our number seven spot, we have enormous babies. There have been many reports from NASA employees of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin seeing aliens when they first arrived on the moon. Even though Buzz and Neil deny it, I'm sure they have been told to deny it, if you know what I mean. A former NASA employee by the name of Otto Binder bypassed NASA's broadcasting and picked up the following being said. NASA, what's there, Apollo 11? Response, these babies are huge, sir. Enormous, oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there, lined up on the far side of the crater edge. They're on the moon watching us. Apparently off the record, the astronauts have admitted to many scientists that they did indeed see something. Yeah, I believe it. It's silly to think that there is nothing out there. That's just, you know, human ego, I think, to believe that we are the only intelligent life. That mixed with human fear. In our number six spot, we have the lights. Of course, I couldn't have a list without the strange space light phenomena on it. An entire crew at the International Space Station in 2005 witnessed a set of strange lights projecting across space. Commander Leroy Chow has commented on this strange sighting and said that the light was in a weird formation as if it were an upside down V shape. The crew and Chow saw this fleet of lights in the shape of an upside down V fly past them. It would be one thing if it were just one person, but an entire crew witnessed this. That's a lot of people that would be lying. So personally, I think that's all the proof we need, folks. There is other intelligent life out there and they may be close by. Perhaps they're already here and running our government. You decide. In our number five spot, we have alien interaction. This one needed to be included on the list because it's really just suspicious. Very sus. Apparently, Scott Kelly, a well-known astronaut and most notably known for spending a very, very long time on the International Space Station, the longest an astronaut has ever spent there, actually. But anyways, Scott has been known to make quite a few jokes about the things he's seen out there, and we have to wonder, are they really jokes, or was he told not to speak his truth? He was quoted as once saying that aliens have it easier in space than we do. First off, someone's gotta teach this man what a joke is, cause it's missing a punchline. And second, what does does that mean? What makes you say something like that? There must be some weird truth behind it. Anyways, I'm convinced that he's seen aliens. What about you? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number four spot, we have a fleet of UFOs. Allegedly, astronaut Gordon Cooper is another one who has reported seeing UFOs in space. If you haven't heard of Gordon Cooper before, then you should know that he flew both the Mercury 9 and the Gemini 5, so he's really had quite a lot of time in outer space. Apparently, he is now coming out and saying that around the time he flew for the Air Force, he saw a fleet of UFOs. Apparently, not more than 10 years later, he came across a similar scene. Allegedly, in 1963, one of them flew towards him, and to back up his statement, he has proof because it was picked up by the radar. Whoa. Also, what would be his reasoning for making this up? To gain fame? Nah. Well, I mean, it's possible, but he would have already gained some clout just by being an astronaut in space, so I feel like that's probably not likely, but anyways, I believe him. He's gone on to say that, Quote, I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet and other planets. Most astronauts were reluctant to discuss UFOs. I did have occasion in 1951 to have two days of observation of many flights of them, of different sizes, flying in fighter formation, generally from east to west over Europe. Fascinating. In our number three spot, we have the cylindrical object. Allegedly in 1991, a cosmonaut by the name of Musa Menarov caught a cylindrical object on film that he believed to be a UFO. The object was shiny and in the film, it swivels and flies across space. Originally, Musa thought it was something off the ship, but then after further investigation, nothing was missing from the ship. So after further reflection on seeing it and you know looking 
looking back at the footage, he's convinced it was some kind of UFO ship or UFO device. What's with all the UFO objects that are so shiny? Do you think this is a UFO? Or perhaps is it something from another planet? Let us know in the comment section below. Coming up in our number two spot, we have the mystery hut. The ending to this made me lol so hard that I had to include it. A mystery hut was discovered by China's astronauts and people operating their U-2-2 moon rover. This rover was making its way through the northwestern part of the moon when it was discovered. On the camera, a cute shaped mystery hut was captured. This was only in November of 2021. It created Created a spectacle. Had moon people finally been discovered? Everyone was asking themselves. By January 2022, the rover was much closer. And what did it find? Oh, just a small piece of space rock on a crater rim. <laughs> <laughs> the drama. Ooh, look, a mystery hut. Probably the moon men reside there. One month later. Alas, it is a rock. Humans are funny. <laughs> in our number one spot, we have UFO footage. Recently in 2020, Russian astronaut, cosmonaut Ivan Wagner made a time lapse video while orbiting space, and he claimed to have found something. Space guests, he called them. In his video, you see the curved edge of the Earth at night with a green swirl of the aura moving across the surface and several falling stars. It's such a cool video to see. Then about nine seconds in, you see a fleet of five possible UFOs. He said that because it's in a time-lapse format. You can't measure how long they were there, but in real life, it was for about 50 seconds in real life time. This video is so crazy. Honestly, even if it's not alien fleets, to see such a beautiful sight with the falling stars is just unreal. It must be incredible to be an astronaut. 